Okay, how's everybody doing? All right, well, of course, we're in the series, I Want It All, so I just wanted to kind of share with y'all um, why I want all of God, why I want everything that he has for my life, and there was a time in my life where that I didn't know there was more of Jesus. I just kind of thought, you know, okay, you know, I'm saved, and that's good. I feel good now. I've surrendered my life to the Lord, and I really had no idea what was in store. I never knew how much there was going to be of God, and as I've continually sought him, as I've continually given things up, he's been so faithful. He's been so good in my life, and I never knew that there was actually just more and more. I thought I was trying to get to this place where I was like, okay, I'm good now. You know, everything, you know, okay, I'm good now, you know, but we go from glory to glory to glory and I'm telling you the Lord wants to work in your life and this night is not about your neighbor it's not about the person that you invited that thinks that you think needs God more than you it's about you it's about me I'm excited for what God's gonna do even in me tonight because he just wants us to be open and when we're hungry he promises to fill us and um I found a love that's greater than life. You know, there's things that we look at in this world and we think that our lives are so important, but they're really not. The only reason that we're here is to serve him, to bring him glory, to let our light shine before men, that they would see our good works and glorify our Father. And Psalm 63.3 says, because your loving kindness is better than life. And before that, it says that his soul longs for you. I long for you. I, all, all I want to do is dwell in your temple. And that's the place God wants our hearts to be. I mean, we still have to go out in the world. We still have to work. We still have to provide. You know, that's our mission field. But the Lord wants our hearts to be that way. But we can't just say, okay, this is what I'm going to do, you know. And that's kind of how I was. And it's like, I just have to be that way because his loving kindness is better than life. He came to me when I was sick in my sin. He came to me when I was blind and I couldn't see. He came to me when I thought that I was religious enough to make it okay. And he said, Carrie, there's more for you. There's more for you. And the more I got and the more I tasted, the more I wanted and the more I wanted. And, you know, know I just went into the deep things of God and John 6 63 says it is the spirit who gives life the flesh profits nothing I mean just think about it how many thoughts have you had about yourself today and the Lord has really been challenging me on that and I've been catching myself and it's because I want more of God that I'm willing to say whoa 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 this is too much a carry because it says the spirit gives life and I want that life because I've tasted that life and I know that that life is what I want and it says the flesh profits nothing the words I speak to you are spirit and they are life and 1 Corinthians 2, 9 and 10 says, Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has entered into the heart of man what God has planned for him. I has not seen, ear has not heard. You can read a story about a great revival. I can read a story about Azusa Street or whatever, and I can get so excited, and it seems like that would just be it. Like that would just be, that's what we want, you know, because just the manifest glory of God. But... Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has even entered into our hearts what God has planned for every one of us. For me, that's why I want more of God because he says that he has thoughts toward me, thoughts to prosper me and not to harm me. That means God has thoughts for me. God has thoughts for every person in here. That's why I want all God has for me. It's not worth it. And the reason that God wants us to have all of him is so that we pour our lives out. We have this overflow that we're not even trying, we're not even striving we're ministering to people without even realizing it because our generation is lost and they're dying and I remember how I felt knowing looking back like I was blind and I didn't even know it I was blind and I didn't even know it and that's how your friends are that's how your peers are that's how your co-workers are that's how my co-workers are and I mean maybe there's someone in here tonight that's like that like what I'm saying isn't really making sense because I can remember sitting in church and I was kind of like yeah I get it but I didn't really get it. I wasn't truly plugged into the life that Jesus wanted to bring me. I wasn't truly surrendered, laying my life down, saying, Jesus, take all that I am because I want all that you have. And that when I have an encounter in the presence of the Lord, even just like in worship then, there is no place I would rather be. There's nowhere else you should rather be. And once you experience that, and I mean, 
if you're wondering how you experience that, just open yourself up. Open yourself up. Those things that we try to hold on to, they're things the Lord told me, Terry, lay this down, lay this down. And, you know, it was kind of this tug of war thing. And then it's almost like this moment where I'm like, why would I not give that to him? Why would I try to hold on to that? Why would I do that? Because when I give it to him, it's always worth it. It is always worth it. And his word says that whatever we give up in this life, even if it's family, friends, things, whatever, whatever we give up in this life, he will give us 100 times in this life and in the life to come. What he has is so much better. I mean, when I think about God and I think about wanting more of him, it's just crazy because it's like there's always more. And it's like you just begin to think and you think about the disappointments in your life and the hurts and the pains and the reasons that we bind ourselves up and keep ourselves away from him. And then I just think and I'm like, God, you are true. You are faithful. You, you could do no wrong even if you tried. Even if he wanted to do wrong, even if he, he, he couldn't, he couldn't even want to. There's not a lie in him. There's only truth in him. He only does good. And if you think differently than that, then that is not God. That is a lie. And I just speak death to that lie in the name of Jesus because God is so faithful. He is so good. He is so true. He is so holy. He's so holy that I don't even know why we try to sit around and act like everything is okay because he is so worth it. All he wants to do is fill your life with good things. Jesus came to give us life more abundant. Why wouldn't we take it? That's what I ask myself. I'm like, Jesus, you came to give me abundant life. Why would I not take it? And I look at people that are living their lives and they're just kind of in the world and they're just doing their own thing. And they're Christians and they go to church on Sunday and they, you know, maybe read their Bible a little bit. And they have coworkers that are lost or dying and they don't even really care about them, you know. And I'm just like, you know, I'm like, I want people to get it like I get it because I'm not perfect. But I know I want to lay my life down. I know that I want everything that God has for me because I has not seen ear, has not heard. And God has a plan for the people around us. And I just want to read Jeremiah 29, 11. I've said a little bit about it, but it says, For I know the thoughts I think towards you. And, you know, when I read that, I don't just think about myself. God has thoughts for every lost person that I'm around. God has thoughts for those people. He has thoughts for every person in here. He thinks about you. The creator of the universe, he has thoughts for me. He has thoughts for those around me. He loves them. He loves them. Why would I not want all of him that I could pour out to other people? He knows the thoughts I think towards you, thoughts of, to, of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. And I'm just telling you, God's doing something in the earth. God wants to shake our generation, and I want to be in his presence. In his presence is fullness of joy. In his presence is peace. In his presence is where I feel fulfilled, and there are things that I reach out to do to fulfill myself, and I think, what am I doing? I want more of God. And I'm telling you, tonight is a night where God is saying, just let me in. Just free fall into my presence. Free fall into my plan that I have for your life. And that's what he's been saying to me. And we try to hold back just a little bit. And he's saying, just let go. He is worth it. And I want more of God. And I'm telling you, I'm about to seek the face of God. And I'm going to run hard after him. And I'm telling you, he wants every one of us to do the same thing. Because his plans for us are great. His plans for us exceed what we even think in our minds. He's tired of us playing in games. He's tired of us putting on our religious facade. I saw this vision and we were all wrapped in these pretty boxes and inside there was nothing or there was death or there was evil or there were these thoughts that were not of him or whatever and he was saying just unwrap the boxes and let me in let me come feel it let me come give it life and I thought he was talking about everybody else and he was like Harry you too he was like unwrap your box and I'm telling you tonight unwrap your box get all of God you can get because it's going to be good so